main goal is to understand the evolution of the labor market uh, in the collapse and now hopefully early recovery um, from the COVID crisis. So we all know that the economy has been in free fall since mid-March, um, but typical data sources usually provide little uh, granularity for understanding a range of important questions. For instance, what are the impact of the state uh, imposed stay at home policies on uh, the economy? Uh, how have uh, the COVID crisis impacted uh, across different types of jobs? What is the effect of um, the impact on reopening? We're interested in these questions, and to some extent, we can use traditional data sources to answer these, but that's going to be at somewhat of a lag or um, at much less granularity than we would like. So primarily what I'm going to show you today is our analysis of a data set of job vacancy postings collected by Burning Glass Technologies. So Burning Glass scrapes postings that are jobs that are posted to any uh, online website, <clears throat> for instance, monster.com, careerbuilder.com. They would also scrape individual employers like the National Bureau of Economic Research, who presumably post ads on their website. They have pro proprietary algorithms to um, code up information content in the job ads. And most importantly, right now, <clears throat> these job ads are available in real time at a detailed geography, industry, occupation, whatever you like. Now, it's important to remember a couple things about job postings relative to other data sources. So job vacancies are inherently a forward-looking measure of how employers um, anticipate their hiring needs. Contrast that with something like initial unemployment insurance claims, which are also available at a weekly level and received a great deal of attention. Those are a backward-looking measure asking essentially what has been going on with layoffs in the recent period. So we can learn a lot by contrasting the forward-looking and the backward-looking measures. So what do we see? Well, the left panel here is the time series of job vacancy postings in 2020. And what you see, despite the fact that vacancy postings are, are fairly noisy in general, you see just this massive plunge in postings beginning in mid-March and bottoming out basically in late April, early May, where we see a 40% over more than a 40% decline in postings over this time period. Interestingly, actually, we are seeing in late May and early June, postings starting to come back. On the right panel, you can see the same trend that we saw in April and March with the initial unemployment insurance claims. So people who are filing for, un for unemployment insurance for the first time, presumably because they just got laid off. And there we see this historic spike that is again beginning to come back down. But even just as of the release today, we have almost 1.5 million new claims as of last week, uh, which is much larger than in any given week we saw in the Great Depression. So we're starting to see a little bit of recovery, but these historically high initial claims are warning. Now with hindsight, we actually can compare these series to the more traditional data produced by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which now goes up through mid-May. The left side shows the employment series, which matches the, the, the plunge of the burning glass data. Uh, and you're actually starting to see a little bit of an early recovery uh, in the last month. Uh, this recovery is quite shallow compared to the 13% employment drop we saw uh, in March and April. And interestingly, this recovery is coming a little bit before the big recovery in job vacancy postings. And I wanna come back and talk about that at the end, how we are not yet seeing recovery through market hires and vacancies, but hopefully we will. Um, on the right series, I'm showing you um, a series of our, a measure of separations that we've uh, been able to calculate using current population survey longitudinally linked data. Um, of movements from employment to non-employment. And that series matches up fairly well. And what's neat about that is we're gonna get much more granularity in terms of industry and occupation compared to the initial claims data, although we do have to sacrifice uh, on sample size because it's a smaller survey. Okay, so these are the national trends, but what can we learn by going into detail with the burning glass data? Well, first, we can look across US states at the timing of when they implemented their stay at home policies. So here I'm just dividing states into four groups. The darkest line is the earliest closers. The dashed lines are states that never closed and the lighter colored lines are somewhere in between. And the overwhelming impression from this picture is that 
there was a nationwide collapse that occurred at the same time and roughly the same magnitude across sectors. These vertical lines give you an indication of um, the essentially the week of closing. But what we see from these collapses is they really did all happen at the same time. And even if there are some small differences in the levels, that is uh, trump trumped by um, just the general collapse. We can look at a number of other uh, data series as well, and essentially we see the same thing. Everybody collapsed, small differences perhaps between states and the magnitude of the collapse, but in general everybody collapsed. Where we actually do see more of a pattern is when we relate the employment collapse and the labor market series collapses to the early spread of the virus. So if we look at how many cases there were in early March, basically before state policy had a time to impact either the virus or the labor market, we do see these relationships. So the, the more cases a state had in early March, the bigger their eventual drop in postings, drop in employment, and the bigger their eventual increase in unemployment insurance claims. And all of these relationships are statistically significant. So we don't wanna to make too much of that because we have essentially 41 data points that are highly uh, correlated with each other. Um, however, it does make more sense that it's the, actually the virus itself that is potentially driving these labor market trends more so than the state policies for stay at home workers. Now, we can also look at the impact of the economy across sectors. And in particular, we're interested in understanding essential industries versus non-essential industries and pulling out some uh, important patterns. Uh, so, for example, the maroon solid line is showing you essential retail. Essential retail had no collapse whatsoever. In fact, you see these spikes in vacancy postings at the beginning of the crisis as employers scrambled to, to meet the need of people racing to the store to buy their toilet paper and groceries. Um, for the other sectors, so here I'm going to show you the maroon dash line is non-essential retail, like clothing stores and such. The red solid line is leisure and hospitality. So that's gonna include essential industries like restaurants and hotels, as well as non-essential industries like movie theaters. These two sectors saw the largest collapses, which kind of makes sense. These are the customer facing types of jobs that people might be worried about going out to consume in. For the other sectors, the solid green line are other essential sectors, the dash green line are other non-essential sectors, and the orange line is healthcare, which also had a special experience during this crisis. For those sectors, there's really very little difference. Everybody experienced um, a, a, a big decline in vacancy postings um, at roughly similar magnitudes. And actually everybody's vacancy postings are starting to come back. And when we compare this to data series on job separations and employment, that all looks very similar. Small differences across industries. Um, especially a uh, retail sector was somewhat protected while the customer facing non-essential retail and leisure and hospitality were somewhat harder hit. Overwhelmingly, almost all industries took a, took a large hit. Interestingly, essential retail, although its vacancy postings and employment did not collapse, workers who were previously in essential retail had a big spike in layoffs. And so what that means is that industry in particular was experiencing a great deal of reallocation as employers were scrambling to meet need in particular segments and not other segments. Um, so what does this all mean? Uh, job vacancy postings and our other data show um, broad-based synchronous collapse across states. What I didn't show you is that we've also looked at postings in our other series in terms of work conditions and in particular is this job one that can be performed from home? And there we're using the Dingle and Neiman uh, measure that they have produced. And there we see small differences, but we see big collapses across the board, regardless of whether uh, the, you're work from home capable. And as I've shown you, we've seen big collapses across essential and non-essential sectors. Uh, so essentially, we see collapses across the board, regardless of whether the state is prohibiting employment from happening or whether work conditions are prohibiting employment from happening. And therefore, our conclusion has been that the damage was not solely caused by stay at home orders and state policy, and therefore is unlikely to be undone simply by lifting them. Now, the more traditional BLS data sources are largely aligning with our sources, but they don't provide the, timeless, the timeliness for us to be able to understand, well, what's happening lately what's happening with state reopenings. 
Well, in the burning glass data, if we divide states into four groups based on the timing of their reopening policies, we are still not really seeing much of a difference at all. It really doesn't look like the darker lines would be earlier reopenings and the dashed lines would be never closed. Still really does not look like there's much of a difference in activity other than now this um, uh, early recovery that we're seeing in vacancy postings. So just to wrap up, again, the early evidence on reopenings confirms our initial um, intuition that you can't just flip a switch to get the economy back on track. And now many researchers are coming around to the same conclusion based on uh, their other data sources as well. Now, the shallow employment recovery that we saw in March, uh, which I alluded to at the beginning, what we're finding as we look into the data is that that's mainly been driven by recalls. So workers who were temporarily separated from their employers um, are now being recalled somewhat. And that's good because that means that workers are maintaining ties with their employers. But overwhelmingly what's going on is that most workers are still waiting to be recalled. And those who are searching actively have had no success, have had very historically low success in finding jobs. And part of that must be related to the fact that burning glass vacancies had not recovered as of May when we saw some early employment recovery. And so we're not really seeing hires through the market process. Moving forward, the June, um, burning glass vacancy data do show improvements. And so we might start to see these market hires going, going forward. Although UI claims are still remain at historically elevated levels and the worry about the virus is certainly not going away. In fact, it might be increasing. And so our conclusion is really that the complete recovery is going to take getting the virus under control, um, improvements in consumer confidence, et cetera. 